floor to Elisa Gaetan, who will present more in traffic scenarios via Markovia and opinion dynamics. You have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, so, good afternoon to everybody. My name is, of course, is Cecilia. I hope you're going to be here. Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Elisa Gaetan, and I'm here to introduce you our work uh, titled Modeling Traffic Scenarios via uh, Markovian Opinion Dynamics. So since it should be a very brief presentation, I will start with a quick introduction on the field of interest and then the motivation of our work, then our contributions or our idea, and then finally a very, uh, a very quick, um, I will show you real quick our result. Um, so our field of interest is road transportation and in particular control of traffic. So as everybody may know, road transportation is one of the uh, main actors in the worldwide economy and at the same time one of the major uh, sources of environment pollution. So every, uh, having uh, uh, an efficient traffic control methods play a crucial role in improving road networks. Our motivation, so the scientific gap we would like to fill, is that among the existing traffic control strategies, mainstream controls involves regulating traffic flows on um, methods that um, allow to, for example, regulate speed limits, uh, regulate the speed uh, by speed limits, or uh, giving uh, by giving change indications. So, however, uh, this method has several limitations. So, for example, as uh, you can see in this picture, there are sensors who are placed in a uh, defined position along the road. So, instead, we would like to, um, to predict and to control the traffic flows along all the roads, not just in a particular, um, in a, in a, in a particular location. So our idea is instead to, to assume that vehicle moves can be seen as choices or decision, and thus they can be modeled using techniques from opinion dynamics. So we propose a Markovian model. Uh, so we designed this model and we compare heat predictions with those obtained from a widely recognized model. Why? Basically because from the best of our knowledge, we never found uh, a work, a paper that uh, connected opinion dynamics to traffic control. So our was, again, to the best of our knowledge, the first trial. So we evaluate our microscopic model using, using a very uh, simple scenario, which is a single lane highway scenario. And we are currently working on an extension of, and we are trying to include at least two lanes. Uh, in particular, this road segment is partitioned into a series of small sections, which we call cell, uh, as you can see uh, in, this, uh, in this picture. And we are interested in uh, predicting the density variation in itself. So um, our result shows that our Markovian framework can effectively uh, predict the evolution of the state of the cells. Uh, and here I show uh, on the top figure our predictions and on the bottom figure the prediction that we uh, obtained with a, a widely recognized traffic model. And except for uh, a small portion, which is highlighted by the red uh, rectangular, uh, where we cannot make, we cannot, <laughs> we cannot make any prediction, uh, the, the prediction between our model and the widely recognized traffic models are the same. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. So you can make questions during the cocktail. Uh, the next presenter is Silvia Di Girolamo, who will present control of multi input converter using dynamic input equation. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Silvia De Girolamo, and uh, in uh, this presentation, I speak about a control of a multi input uh, converter using a dynamic input allocation. Uh, so, parallel connection of uh, multiple power converters to supply load has become a common uh, solution as it has high reliability, is uh, to maintain and repair, the improved. Uh, improve the thermal management and uh, so on. So, this, uh, this structure has been used for uh, low voltage. 
like the current power supplies, where the parallelization of the converter allows uh, uh, for an increase uh, of, uh, of the maximum current that uh, can, uh, can be supplied. Uh, so this is the, the electrical circuit of the multi-input uh, converters and it's a, com a compass uh, to uh, voltage source and uh, connected to a common DC bus to, to synchronous bus, um, bus converter and an ideal uh, current generator connected in parallel to the DC bus capacitor to model both uh, passive and active load. Uh, so the main goal of uh, this, uh, this work is uh, to uh, control independently both uh, um, the output voltage and the current uh, distribution. Uh, so it is uh, well known that uh, the light variation of the duty cycle may balance the, the two branches that are connected in parallel and provide energy to the load. Uh, so to maintain the circuit balance, it is uh, necessary to regulate the, the, the DC bus voltage by stabilizing an equilibrium point. There are many affinity equilibrium point and uh, for um, since the multi-input converter is over uh, is over actuated and for this reason an uh, dynamic allocation uh, technique uh, will select the equilibrium point regarding the proposed control solution i mean type control law and uh, a dynamic allocation strategy is used in order to achieve the goal this is the, the block diagram of the proposed control algorithm and the first step is the uh, selection of the equilibrium point the second step is the mean type control law, where we consider a checking error and a suitably selected the positive definite matrix uh, P. And um, now the defining uh, move of V in, uh, in, this, uh, in this way. And uh, um, uh, the input of who chosen has who equal uh, U stub um, uh, ensure uniform global asymptotic stability of the, the system. The, the third step is the dynamic allocation strategy, where we consider Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, um, regarding the result and conclusion, as shown in the figure, the, um, by varying the, the value of the, the reference current, there is no um, effect on the output voltage whose value remains constant. And the system is robust against parameter variation and the load variation. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> The next speaker is Valeria Bonamura. So, as you see, we have several women in this uh, PhD program, and I'm actually very happy about this. Uh, so, um, Valeria, we, we talk about securing cyber physical systems, secure distributed consensus, and distributed model based anomaly detection. Okay, I am Valeria Bonagura and in my post presentation I want to summarize all the uh, research activity I've been studying during the first year of my PhD. And uh, I have been studying three different research topics and uh, I would like to say a few words uh, about all of them and then I will, uh, I will be happy to, to explain one in detail uh, later. So, a possible approach to identify uh, attacks in a network is using a model-based anomaly detection, and especially in distributed system, it's important to use a, a large-scale systems, it's important to use a distributed approach, such as, such as uh, the multi-rate interlist common filter. And the problem is that uh, traditionally, all the substations should be perfectly synchronized, uh, which in large-scale system is not feasible often. And therefore, we uh, propose an approach where when the station is not able to synchronize, uh, we increment the uncertainty on the estimate in order to uh, adapt the Kalman gain and still use those updated information. The second uh, topic I've been given is how to counteract uh, false data injection attack in a, a setting involving a process equipped with smart sensor or a controller that is able to communicate, communicate with a remote station and a malicious agent that periodically sends false updates. Both agents know that there is an adversary on the, on the network and want to uh, decide their transmission rate in order to uh, minimize an object, maximize an objective function. In particular, the controller want, wants to uh, maximize the, uh, want to minimize the age of incorrect information to the remote station, that is the amount of time that the remote station has incorrect information, while the malicious agent want to uh, minimize it. And we um, prove that there is a Nash equilibrium. 
Well, in the third uh, topic that I've been studying, we exploit the synchronization of a certain category of nonlinear dynamical function uh, to the secure distributed consensus. In particular, uh, we use this feature of those nonlinear function to encrypt uh, um, the, the communication. And uh, we identified this class on a linear function, and we proved that with our uh, consensus, uh, uh, with our consensus, is preserved the security and the, the privacy during the, the computation. And this is the list of publications. Thank you for your attention. Thank you also for being very concise. Thank you. The next speaker is Pierluigi Francesco de Paola who will talk about modeling the long-term effects of physical activity on the pathway to type 2 diabetes in new mathematical formulations. Just a small information, uh, we will uh, take a couple of pictures during the cocktail event, very good photo, uh, one picture of all the PhD students, so please be there, and another picture of the PhD students with the professors. So we would like to, for all of you to be there. Thank you. Hello, I am Pierluigi De Paola from CNR, and I will present my work that deals with the new mathematical formulation for the modeling of the long-term effects of physical activity on diabetes progression. So, the rationale of the work moves from the fact that uh, although there are clinical evidence of the effect of physical activity in the delay of uh, progression of type 2 diabetes, uh, there are no mathematical models available to describe this effect. However, to be able to implement model-based control technique that can use physical activity as a control input, it is of great interest, interest to try to understand which are the biological mechanisms involved in the mediation of the effects of physical activity. So in this sense, we have developed a new model that has been recent, recently published, IEEE Control Systems Letters, that show how a specific protein, telukin 6 should act a key role in the prevention of the degradation of beta cell mass that is at the basis of the onset of type 2 diabetes. So in this sense, the key finding of the model is that uh, it uh, is the first that allows the implementation of model-based control techniques that uses uh, physical activity as a control input for T2D control. So as you can see, the model acts on two dynamics. First dynamics, that it is uh, related to what happens in uh, the context of a single exercise session in which physical activity is represented by the oxygen consumption variable PVO2 max that triggers the dynamics of interleukin-6, which in turn, in the long term, through its integral action that is represented by the VL state variable, promotes beta cell replications and uh, reduces beta cell apoptosis by means of specific functions that are in functions that actually depends on the integral of uh, EL6. So by means of this flow that is represented in the slide by the arrow, it is possible to understand why PVO2max is a new important agent for T2D control. And the, the results that uh, uh, we have published uh, confirm that uh, if we uh, compare our model to two other simulation cases that neglect the action of oxygen consumption and interleukin-6, these models are not able to keep the effects of physical exercise on diabetes progression. On the contrary, if we consider the red line that represents our model, this formulation that considers oxygen consumption and interleukin-6 together is able to represent the uh, uh, delay produced by physical activity in diabetes progression. Thank you for your attention. We can go deeper for the results in the post session. Thank you. The next speaker is Yi Ke Yi, uh, who will talk about safety-oriented testing for high-speed rail and what equipment using pigments. Um, hello, uh, everyone. I am uh, Yi Ke Li. Currently, I'm studying in the University of Galiali. Uh, and my research topic is fault diagnosis and security in smart cities. Uh, my tutors are Professor Alessandro Zhua and Professor Intom. Uh, today, I will introduce our latest work, Safety-Oriented Testing for High-Speed Rail Onboard Equipment Using Petrolets. 
And the goal of this study is to consider uh, two design test cases that consider various faults or malfunctions for onboard equipment. This is the technical roadmap of this study. Uh, it mainly consists of two phases, uh, scenario modeling and uh, deriving test cases. Uh, first, we use Petrolist to describe the system's behavior. And then we conduct the safety analysis on the model to, to derive the test cases. And, um, especially we consider a very uh, critical scenario, lamb the lever conversion, um, to illustrate our method in our paper. So this is the uh, final model we obtained, and this is the uh, formalization of uh, test cases using petrolet uh, semantics. Uh, and uh, by uh, analyzing the evolution of this petrolet model, uh, finally we obtained the, this eight test cases that consider various uh, scenarios. And to the best of our knowledge, th uh, this paper is the first one that tried to uh, apply Petrolet to directly uh, generating the test cases for real signaling system. Uh, in the future, we plan to um, develop uh, more efficient algorithms um, for generating the test cases, as well as um, to consider more complex subsystems or models. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. The next speaker is Sebastiano Taddei, who will present a talk on a physics driven framework for online minimum time vehicle motion planning and research. Okay, good afternoon everyone. I am Sebastiano Tadei and I'm here today to present the recent advancements we've made to our physics driven framework for online minimum time motion planning and control for vehicles, uh, which we call artificial race driver or ARD for short. As many of you may know, minimum time motion planning and control for autonomous vehicles is a complex and partly unsolved problem. Everything becomes even more involved when you consider that in real world applications, many of the default parameters are usually unknown, uh, be it for cost or difficulty of measurement. That is why we started to develop ARC, which is a physics driven framework capable of setting the best lap times with a black box autonomous vehicle, as well as automatically learn the vehicle dynamics and the low level vehicle control loop. In the future, we also intend to plan feasible emergency maneuvers for passengers' cars, thanks to the ability of ARD to drive a vehicle near its handling limits. Let us now briefly go over the overall framework and the major improvements that we presented in our latest publication. Starting from the architecture, ARD has a hierarchical motion planning and control framework. Uh, recently, we focused on improving the, the high-level motion planner, the low-level feedforward steering controller, and the overall learning method. Speaking of motion planner, we uh, formulated a novel lateral, sp lateral speed prediction model inspired by the lateral velocity diagram of the driven vehicle. We integrated it in our kinetodynamical model that we use for online minimum time path planning via EMPC. To control the steering of the vehicle, we developed a novel physics informed neural network inspired by the handling diagram. The structure of this network allowed us to have a controller which is accurate, interpretable, and lightweight in terms of parameters. Lastly, the learning scheme. We devised a three round automatic learning scheme that enables ARD to automatically learn the vehicle dynamics and the low level control loop using just um, open and closed loop maneuvers and a few laps around the racetrack. Now that you got a brief overview of how the framework works, uh, let's see how ARD performs. Uh, it is capable of setting lap times on unseen tracks, so tracks that has never seen before, uh, of only 0.175 seconds from the performance limits of the vehicle. Uh, this is evident from the GGB diagram that shows that ARD pushes the, the vehicle near its ending limits, as well as from the resulting trajectory, which is very close to the best offline lap time. 
In addition, it shows good robustness to variations in the depot mass of even up to 15% its original mass. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I uh, will see you at the post session. Thank you, Sebastiano. Now, Michela Brunella will present a talk on model predictive control for patient specific cancer dynamics informed <coughs> by computational imaging. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Michela Brunella, and my research project concerns the biological digital twin. Um, deciphering the mechanism of cancer proliferation, invasion, and the resistance to drug therapies is a challenging task due to a complex and multi scale behavior. Um, in recent years, modeling approaches are being uh, increasingly informed by patients' medical data in order to uh, allow a precise and personalized uh, cancer, uh, cancer dynamics monitoring. Uh, the bidimensional bi uh, process under study is governed by two ordinary differential equations, um, which describe the uh, dynamics of the in vivo cancer tumor growth. In particular, the mathematical terms in the Stepanovas model describe the interaction between uh, cancer cells and the immune cells, uh, and uh, these latter fight, fight against cancers uh, and are, are further a measure of the health state of the patient. Uh, so, um, 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 so uh, we want to uh, derive um, uh, through, an optima, through an adaptive MPC program an optimized uh, therapy, which includes uh, a chemotherapy and or immunotherapy uh, drug design. In particular, um, we, um, we want to uh, derive some control inputs to uh, make uh, action of uh, to make action in, uh, that, in those uh, equations, in particular for cancer regression, while um, preserving the immune ability of uh, immune, immune cells. Um, parameter, model parameters act as an overriding of the behavior described analytically and must twin the cancer-specific uh, characteristics. Uh, we, propose to, um, uh, we propose an experimentally driven model to um, estimate the cancer proliferation rate. Uh, it concerns the processing of digital histology images through the segmentation of tumor tissue and the feature destruction from the graph organization of lymphocytes in the tumor microenvironment. Thus, through image processing algorithms, we are able to assess the cancer infiltration and uh, distinguish two, two different patients, run different simulations uh, for, the, for different values of the same parameters. Um, um, so, uh, we, uh, the, for the uh, closed loop analysis, we, uh, we have that for different values of the same parameters, we have uh, two different um, behavior. In particular, we analyze the, um, the, um, the, the ability of the process to uh, follow a reference signals, uh, which is uh, um, inherent uh, uh, the, the dynamics of a, uh, a patient that uh, try that, that, uh, succeed in the, the control of the tumor. Uh, and in particular, we mentioned the error index as the sum of the square error between the uh, actual output and reference output, and then the uh, dose index, which measure the effort needed uh, for the uh, for the uh, the, the therapies needed to achieve a certain output. Um, so, 
Yes, um, we uh, we just pro uh, uh, presented and proposed an uh, a promising interplay between the quantitative image analysis and the control uh, dynamics uh, methods, and uh, by showing a simplified application to support the decisions in oncology based on prediction and personalization of treatment. Thank you for all your attention. is Roberto Maria Sargino, who talks about deep learning for automatic vision-based recognition of industrial surface effects and surveys. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so now, uh, in today's industrial landscape, uh, Deep learning is, uh, is gaining popularity within the, the, the quality inspection department. Uh, they represent the natural evolution from a classic machine learning system where teachers were crafted by humans. Now, today, we can call them as fully automatic since they don't need any uh, human intervention to acquire knowledge and uh, we can do a lot of things with them, such as classification, detection and segmentation. So we have multiple architecture types, but we know uh, we uh, discovered that they share uh, some common problems, such uh, imbalance and small dataset, uh, the annotation efforts, uh, and of course the real-time constraints uh, that uh, uh, this system have to face when uh, uh, deployed in line. To perform the search objective that uh, are classification, segmentation, and detection, of course, we need some data and some ground truth labels. Of course, we can have a lot uh, of, uh, of them in different ways. For example, if we know that we want to perform a classification task and we have a class label, good or bad, for example, we will have a fully supervised problem. But if we want to perform segmentation, we can even with class label, but we will call them now weekly supervised. And of course, we can do them, we can do the research objective without ground truth, so without label. Now, what the research is focusing on actually is the fact to uh, make a segmentation that is the highest level of uh, deep learning, let's say, without labels, so without ground truth, but uh, not in a simple way. We know that deep learning is a black box, and what the research is focusing on is to give uh, a decision, a, a trusted decision, uh, let's say an explanation about the decision. So we have not just a decision, but a trustworthy decision. If, in the few, if, you, if you get the point, we are switching now from a human skill knowledge to an artificial and trustworthy knowledge that cannot only do something better than humans, for example, but can even endorse the knowledge and teach to uh, humans something so it becomes a cycle where a cycle where humans teach to machine and machine can teach to humans. Thank you for your attention. The next speaker is Daniel Antonucci, who talks about leak protection in pharmaceutical field trials and identification based approach. Okay, so good afternoon to every, everybody. I'm Daniel Antonucci, and, and I'm going to talk about a pro, an approach for leak detection in freeze dryer. First of all, what is a freeze dryer? It is a machine that is able to operate under low pressure and temperature um, in order to remove moisture from products while preserving the structure and properties. It is usually divided into in a chamber where we place our products and a condenser that takes out the, uh, the vapor. Uh, the vapor is generated during the freeze drying process where there are three main phases. The freezing phase where the product is frozen and uh, the water and, and, and other solvent are uh, transformed into ice. Next, in the primary drying, we increase the temperature in order to uh, sublimate the ice, staying below the triple point, so by passing the liquid phase. And finally, during the secondary, secondary drying, we increase the temperature a little bit to remove the residual moisture. 
So what is the main problem of a freeze drying is that actually we don't want, um, because there is a huge, huge variation in the temperature and pressure that can cause leaks. So those leaks can affect the uh, freeze drying process, so we don't, we don't want to lose uh, products and uh, uh, have a long maintenance time. Uh, so we want to execute a predictive maintenance rather than a scheduled maintenance. Uh, starting from the leak test phase, which is a, a phase that occurs before the freezing phase, we want to uh, identify leaks by analyzing the pressure increment. Uh, during the, pre the preparation of the leak test phase, uh, the vacuum pump drops the uh, a vacuum pump drops the pressure uh, to a desired value, and then during the, the leak test phase, uh, we let the pressure rise to the, its default value. So we can actually retain information about leaks during the pressure uh, rising. Our model is able to classify two types of leaks. The external leaks that uh, are defined as a QE is uh, an, uh, an introduce, introduction of contaminated air into the chamber and internal leaks that uh, instead alters the pressure in the, into the main chamber. So given the raw pressure signal that uh, we have seen before, we want to identify and estimate the evolution of leaks and um, predict future failure before it occurs. So the result of uh, the resolving the problem of our model is uh, we can actually estimate the pressure uh, rise without the if the pump is switched off, and using this pressure estimate, we can actually uh, define the contributes of internal and external leaks. The sum of these contributes define a leak rate. So if this value uh, surpasses the a threshold, we have to execute a maintenance. Thank you for your attention. So the next speaker is uh, Shakta Palitiao, and uh, he will present the technical physical system for cyber attack with software rejuvenation of linear analysis from the broader system. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shabda Dilshal, and I'm and uh, I'm very delighted to be here to share this uh, valuable insights. I'm basically working under the Professor Sauro Longhi, along with the Professor Alessandro Freddi and Francesco Ferracotti from the University of Politecnica delle Marche, uh, where the focus of our research is to enhance the reliability and the safety of autonomous systems. So in this presentation, I will be briefing you on one of the techniques that can help us to secure the systems, that is software rejuvenation. And we are at the currently at the initial process of uh, analyzing the feasibility of implementing the software rejuvenation on quadruple systems. So let me introduce you the software rejuvenation. It is basically restoring the system towards, uh, any, uh, towards the previous or uh, last checkpoint in order to eliminate the, all the malicious modifications or undesired behavior. So uh, uh, the, the, the basic idea is to, uh, okay. Uh, Okay. So uh, the uh, in, uh, software rejuvenation was basically uh, proposed for the computing systems uh, when to address the problem of uh, software aging. When the system run for a long time, they encounters an error or accumulates an error in order to uh, simply to uh, remove these errors, we just restart the system from from a previous state or last segment by simply reporting the system from an initial state or just by restarting the system. So why software resolution or how it can help us is uh, because uh, uh, every uh, attack, we cannot have a possible method for every possible solution for every attack. In order to just uh, uh, for the temporary solutions, we can have the software resolution which is start the system from a last segment that is an uncorrupted version of the uh, this approach. Moreover, this approach provides us a uh, windows of a frame for a temporary uh, securing us the system for a temporary uh, period in which we can analyze the vulnerability of the system in order to uh, uh, study more towards the attack. Okay, the conclusion of this uh, software rejuvenation is uh, it can be one of the efficient method to uh, secure our systems against these uh, cyber attacks, although there are some uh, imbalance between the performance and the uh, security, but we, by balancing this or opt optimization, we can work against it. So the main purpose of this uh, software rejuvenation is to just to analyze the feasibility, how it is affecting uh, the uh, security and the performance of this uh, system. Thank you. Further implementation can be seen on the posters. Thank you. Thank you.
an activity will be allowed to be to find an original function prediction efficiency, a novel and in a DP algorithm. Hi everybody, uh, this is Ala. Uh, I will present uh, our, my title will be Optimizing Energy Consumption Prediction, Efficiency and Novel ANN Robust Web Fabrication Applications. So we'll move to the titles that will be, or uh, let me, sections that will be presented in this uh, presentation. So problem definition, so we will just like uh, um, mention the problem, then the suggested solution, then the implemented uh, data set, then we will move to the obtained results. So uh, as you know, just like uh, building nowadays um, around um, conception from the global energy around 30 to 45 percent, which is too high. So there are many proposed solutions and algorithms and model to handle this issue in order to um, just like to do very um, good prediction with high accuracy and something that will help to energy performance efficiency and utilization. So um, the proposed study is just like uh, an oval uh, artificial neural network. It will be uh, used to uh, how to uh, decrease the the let me say the error that can be um, that can be predicted or that can be um, came from the output so we can have um, high curate with less error then also uh, the one of the important things how to make this algorithm faster so it can help us to um, to give us the, the results the output results with less time of iterations and also with less uh, complexity uh, so um, this uh, version called adaptive uh, neural network so as you can see on the right side, how this uh, proposed part that can uh, um, just like uh, help the, the, the parameters to, to work adaptively. This is the data that um, has been used. As you can see, the data was collected from 12 building shapes. Then, um, uh, you know, uh, to predict the heating load and cooling load, there are more than one input, eight inputs. So this inputs um, factors also we can uh, say that. So then this uh, according to the input received, for example, um, relative compactness, surface area, wall area, and the others. Then from that, uh, let me say record, we can predict the heating and cooling load. Uh, the, uh, as you can see, the proposed model, which is ANN uh, RBP, uh, can. Uh, can work faster, as you can see from here, and also with less error, so it doesn't need that much iteration to obtain the output. Also, it can be closer to the target, which is the uh, ideal output. Then the proposed, as you can see, uh, parameters here, for example, as you can see, um, this is the momentum, so it can adapt itself instead of constant fixed mo momentum and learning rate. Here we can use we use adaptive momentum, so this momentum can update itself iteratively, so the model can be optimized and the, and the error can be minimized well. This is the results, as you can see, the, with 100 iteration, the proposed list, with 1,000 lists, and for both calling and hitting. Thank you very much, this evidence. See you all. To be to present more than a human human and human data interaction for climate change. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eleonora Vitanza. I work at the University of Siena with my supervisor, Chiara Mocenni. Uh, the project aims to modeling human human and human data interactions for climate change. This is uh, an overview of the project, uh, which involves a multi-step approach uh, to focus on uh, data science analysis on external events, uh, on uh, control processes uh, for the uh, individual perception of climate change and the related climate awareness, and on complex system models uh, on uh, uh, emergent social mechanisms for cooperation and sustainability. 
So in the first case, uh, we introduced uh, a new methodology to detect uh, extreme rainfall events uh, from time series. In particular, we applied the affinity propagation clustering algorithm uh, to a high frequency spatial temporal rainfall dataset in Sicily. Uh, we found statistically robust results, uh, which reveal recent anomalous extreme rainfall events in eastern Sicily. And uh, we applied similar artificial intelligence techniques also in the context of air quality monitoring. Uh, in order to investigate the individual perspective, we extended the mathematical model uh, of awareness based on Markov decision processes uh, via exogenous rainfall data. Uh, in particular, the individual has to solve uh, a backward optimization problem, maximizing this function, which embeds both uh, endogenous and exogenous information. Uh, what we found from simulations is a critical threshold for a specific parameter of the model, outlining two uh, kinds of individuals, the climate aware, uh, able to process cross-cutting information, and the climate susceptible, more sensitive to recent and local events uh, and representing the measure of the population. Uh, what you can see in the figure is uh, the simulation in the case of Catania in the years 2009 and 2021, which was a very extreme year for the city. Uh, we recently developed a similar model uh, in the context of addition, addiction dynamics. Uh, in conclusion, uh, in order to investigate the social perspective and to find whether social positive tipping points emerge, we are developing an agent-based model uh, grounded in game theory and uh, applied to real georeferenced uh, survey data uh, in the specific case of the City of Art of Siena. Uh, so, see you at the poster session and thank you for your attention. To present model predictive control of mass park neurons compatible with solar powered cars. Hello everyone, this is a presentation for model predictive control of smart parking lots compatible with solar powered cars. Uh, as you know, the global solar vehicle market set to be as you know, the uh, global solar vehicle market is set to grow because people pre prefer greener and cleaner uh, transportation uh, options. Uh, also, uh, uh, vehicle to grid V2G system play an important role uh, uh, in uh, smart parking lot lots uh, that serve uh, electric uh, vehicles. There are a lot of um, work uh, uh, related to uh, manage manage the energy of, of smart parking lots that serve uh, uh, electric vehicles but there isn't uh, uh, any um, i mean uh, let's pay attention to the uh, uh, smart parking lots compatible with solar power vehicles for example uh, tom uh, uh, thompson used evs batteries as a, a supplemental resources uh, for power uh, grid uh, also uh, below key uh, uh, demonstrated that EVs function at the mobile storage devices and Scarbaggio uh, has all proposed a smart pricing uh, mechanism that is able to increase the uh, unpredictability of the aggregate load and finally uh, back and uh, pro proposed an experimental study uh, on the uh, performance of a shading matrix to collect the uh, optimal parking space for SPV. So uh, we propose a new framework that considers a, a smart parking lot divided in two uh, parts. One part is roofed, uh, equipped with solar panels, and one part is uh, uh, without um, a roof. And also we should mention that solar cars can uh, 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 bring the batteries and uh, uh, photovoltaic in the parking lots. Uh, as you can see, uh, now we have a new uh, V2G uh, system that is a little more complicated. Uh, in, uh, in each time instead, uh, we have a number of uh, electric vehicles uh, that connected to the parking lot. Uh, we denote NT as the number of connected EVs and N uh, is maximum number of charging piles. Also, we define charging and discharging of EVs. Um, uh, and uh, finally, you can see a state of charge of electric cars. 
Uh, let's focus on the parking lot that serves both uh, EVs and SPVs. Uh, NE is maximum number of roof charging piles and NS is maximum number of unroof charging piles. And you can see a state of charge of solar power vehicles as follows. Also, we have some constraints and uh, include maximum and uh, minimum of discharge rate constraints, the state of charge constraints, uh, constraints on energy production for uh, SPVs, uh, constraints on battery of uh, SPVs and a constraint on the output energy uh, from SPVs. And finally, we have a constraint on the energy production of PVs. And this is the objective function. And as uh, you can see, the result, the uh, um, parking lot uh, that's compatible with SPVs produce more energy and uh, buy uh, less uh, energy from the main grid. Uh, at the conclusion, we propose a novel framework for a smart uh, solar parking system. The system optimizes solar energy utilization, providing efficient charging and uh, power allocation. And uh, this is uh, uh, for, for our future work. We focus on uh, decentralized, distributed uh, framework, and also the, uh, it's obvious the inputs are, are uh, stochastic, and so we definitely uh, should use the stochastic model to predict the control. Thank you. She will present for validation and mathematical modeling of tiny state machine and the cyber attack to analyze different aspects of security. Hello everyone, my name is Vishra and today I will talk about mathematical modeling and security analysis of finite state machines under cyber attack. As we all know that security is a critical problem in many applications, so the purpose of this work is to provide an integrated finite state machine model composed of the attacker and the system being attacked. So as you can see in the figure for this work, we are only considering the fact that the attacker can uh, change or replace the actuator symbols or we are only focusing on the <coughs> attack at the actuator side. So the purpose of this work is to determine a way to find out how the system or plant M will be will remain secure with respect to the attacker MA. So before going into the mathematical detail, I would like to describe these three terms related to the security. So starting with the first term security, the FSMM, because we will be describing the plant and the attacker with the finite state machines. So the FSMM will be called secure if we can detect the attack immediately. For insecurity, if the attack can be detect, uh, cannot be detected immediately, nor with some delay, then the FSM is called insecure. And if the FSM is not secure or not insecure, then it will be insecure. This basically the descriptions of the plant M and the MA using the tuples. We are using these classical definitions, which have the similar terms for X for final state, uh, sorry, X for finite set of the states, initial states, and so on. This basically shows the uh, <clears throat> behavior of M under the influence or under the attacker M A, and this behavior is described using the, comp uh, using the composed model M C. And the last three rows basically shows that the output of the attacker M A, or you can say the output of the composed model and the state transition of the composed model. I'm not going into the detail of these. Uh, mathematical descriptions right now, but these basically shows that what will be the output or the composed model under different mode of actions when the attacker is able to replace the symbol and when the attacker is not able to replace the symbol. So based on those formulas, this is one example. Uh, on the left side, you can see the plant M and the attacker M A, and on the right side, you can see the composed model, which is based on the rules shown previously. Again, this slide basically shows the security condition based on the composed model. If uh, the composed model is able to follow or it is able to satisfy these conditions, then the system M is basically secure under the attacker M A. Conclusion, I would like to say that uh, with this approach, if we have some information about the plant, about our system, and if we have information about the attacker, then we can use to pre-analyze the system and we can design our con uh, controller accordingly. So thank you and see you in the first session. We present how the tracking in the proactive brother.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Matteo Sartoni, and I'm presenting my work entitled Target Tracking Interactive Radars in collaboration with Thales Avenue Space. The main project of this work is, first of all, to study models available in the literature of proactive radars that are working on target tracking problems, and then to adapt these models for a synthetic aperture radar. So first of all, I will focus on uh, target tracking uh, for active radar models uh, that are basically radars uh, that perform target-based measurements, uh, use these measurements uh, to estimate the target state, uh, and then uh, on the basis of this estimate, uh, optimally select uh, the next uh, waveform parameters to be applied. <coughs> And then I, will, I, I have adapted this model for a synthetic aperture radar by introducing, first of all, the satellite dynamics, then by taking into account also the Doppler frequency shift measurement, which is a measurement that uh, a synthetic aperture radar does to acquire better resolution, and then to describe the measurement vector as a function of both the target and the satellite state. What concerns the target dynamics, it is generally described as an autonomous system or controlled system, depending if the radar can adapt the track update interval, so the times at which it will search for the target. And then for what concerns the for active radar model, in our paper have been studied, the authors considered some waveform parameters to, as the input to be adapted, that are the track update interval, the signal pulse width, and bandwidth. Furthermore, they assume that the radar can measure the target spherical coordinates that are the target's range, the azimuth, and the elevation angle. Lastly, I have uh, uh, adapted this model for a synthetic aperture radar that is space borne, so applied on a satellite. First of all, I've uh, taken into account the satellite uh, uh, dynamics by using a simplified linear uniform motion that comes from uh, a flat Earth geometry, used for simplicity. In this case, the satellite state are its uh, Cartesian coordinates. So then, as input, I assumed uh, that the SAR can adapt uh, the signal bandwidth and the track update interval. And lastly, I assume that the SAR can measure, once again, the, re the radar uh, uh, <coughs> spherical coordinates and also the Doppler frequency shift. With difference to the radar model, uh, the range now is a function of both the target state and also the satellite state. Thank you for your attention. We present this introductory class for a partnership between the experts. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. I'm Marco Perin and now I'm going to talk about the um, research we've done at, at Padova about 6D trajectory tracking for a star-shaped uh, TLT dex router. So, uh, this, briefly the setup, uh, uh, we consider the model of a standard uh, multi-rotor platform uh, with noises uh, both on uh, the observer components uh, and the time delays due to the observer that are given by our experimental <coughs> setup in Palua uh, from the motion capture system. And the trajectory here is a circular one, uh, but the attitude uh, um, is such that uh, considering a camera with uh, its uh, frame fixed uh, in the agent uh, frame, um, while uh, it keeps looking at a fixed point in space while doing its uh, uh, position trajectory task. Uh, the first controller we propose here uh, exploits the differential flatness property of, of such platforms um, that basically uh, heavily relies on a feedforward input trajectory that is able to generate uh, from the uh, flat outputs uh, that are position and attitude uh, of the trajectory and their derivatives. And then uh, um, also um, uh, it, it uh, computes the state uh, at at a specific time needed in order to compute uh, feedback, uh, uh, the feedback part of the controller. Then the second controller is an extension, you know, is an extension of an existing one, uh, but uh, extended to compute, uh, uh, to perform trajectory tracking. Uh, this controller uh, relies on the decoupling property of uh, these platforms. Uh, in particular, it uses a decoupled force direction um, 
calculated uh, um, based on the trajectory. It then computes is uh, a force that is that is needed uh, to track the position uh, of the trajectory uh, applied to that direction. From the results, uh, uh, we saw that in a control environment, uh, um, the differential flatness controller obtains uh, extremely good results with very small error, whereas uh, the hierarchical nonlinear controller um, obtain comparable position error with uh, higher attitude ones. But in a realistic environment, uh, we saw that the differential flatness controller kept uh, its performance uh, regarding the attitude error, whereas the position error was were much of uh, were a lot affected by the noises introduced by the introduced introduced sorry by the wind, and uh, with too much wind, uh, it simply diverged. Whereas the hierarchical uh, controller kept uh, both uh, performance uh, and stability at uh, a really good level. Uh, so we saw that the differential flatness controller is. Uh, can be suitable for indoor application where also motion capture systems are available. Whereas for the second controller, it is uh, we saw that it can track uh, trajectories even in the presence of uh, winds or external disturbances or observer that have more or like GPS or etc. Thank you for your attention and see you later in the session. From about the performance analysis of linear and what we are measuring, but in short of the system. Okay. Okay. Uh, dear professors, dear colleagues, good evening. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. So the work is entitled Performance Analysis of Linear and Rotary Energy Harvesting Shock Absorber System. As the outline of the work, let us start with the introduction. The figure one shows the, shows the mechanical model of a full car. The aim of our work is to harvest the energy stored in the suspension, in the vehicle suspension, and convert it into electrical energy. We do so by replacing the damper you can see in the recycle with an actuator while satisfying at the same time the other control specification related to to the safety to the passenger safety now the full carriage energy suspension system we have the ipva which is our main actuator of this work is for inertial pendulum vibration absorber so we will compare four actuators in this work and three high index the, the mathematical model can be seen in equation one. All the details are in our work in the poster. In figure three, we have the IPVA internal structure and the electric climatic. The linear motion of the vehicle is converted to rotational motion of the generator through the screw knot system. Uh, due to the key shift loss in equation two, we can have the electrical power adjusted in equation three, where PCI is the it's the power stored in the inductance. PGI is the power loss due to Joule effects. And PMI is the mechanical power of the actuator. The issue of optimized dynamic feedback control. We want to design a controller of the form of equation four. The following closed loop system is obtained in equation five with T of S being the closed loop transfer matrix. Now the simulations on MATLAB. In this video, we have the acceleration, the actuation current, the harvested electrical power, and the angular speeds. All these results can be summarized in this table. In this table, we can see that the IPVA achieves the greatest energy harvesting in all the cases for the three different types of roads. Conclusions, it can be highlighted that the IPVA can allow better performance in terms of harvested energy if compared with the other actuators. On the other side, from a rider performance point of view, by analyzing the acceleration plots, it can be highlighted that the ride comfort decreased significantly at the increase of the energy ability requirements. Thank you for your attention. So, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, 
uh, some minister will be a counselor, meaning meet Dowsy. So all the PhD students are kind of requested to go to Kyoto Miranda nearby the Kyoto. So we can ask them and ask the questions. <laughs> And also, please remember to come, all of you, also the professors, because we want to have a picture with all of you. Okay? Thank you.